Welcome to the Once Upon an Island podcast. I'm your host, Wesley, and tonight we've done a little switcheroo. I'm joined by my lovely co-host, Mary. Mary, you're back in your regular spot. Yep. Did you miss me? Oh, some people were legitimately were like, where the heck did Mary go? They thought I replaced you. Aww. What people don't know is Mary's doing our winter analysis every week, but this week we had a different scheduling conflict, so we had to switch Mary and Rebecca back. So Rebecca will be on tomorrow's podcast, our Winter Now podcast. But tonight, it's Mary and I talking I'm back. through the breakdown. And yeah, next week we'll go back. It'll be Rebecca on the breakdown of Mary and Winter Analysis. So Mary. Yes. Tonight, Yanu didn't go to Tribal. I know. Finally. This was a good episode to, uh, to be back on the episode breakdown podcast, <laughs> I will say. It was something different to talk about. It was something different to talk about. Yeah, it was nice. It was a good episode. Yeah, I enjoyed it a lot. Well, well, well. We're going to go through everything in chronological order. I got chapter markers here on YouTube. If you're listening on Spotify or wherever else, uh, these are all posted the same night we record them, aka the night of the episode on Patreon. They would go the next day on YouTube, and then later they go on Spotify and all those places. So if you want to listen to them early, Patreon for free. You can listen to these podcasts ad-free. All right. Well, Mary, I have... Some news, unexpected, by the way, when I read today, it's the first time I was not even prepared for this. Are you prepared? No. Do you remember House of Villains? Yes. I'm glad you say you're not prepared because I don't know how to prepare you. Do you know House of Villains? Yes. Yes. We watched an episode of it together. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Johnny Fairplay is on season one. Mm-hmm. They brought back another male villain for season two. From Survivor. From Survivor. Can you guess who? Rob. Go more old school than Rob. More old school than And a villain? Yeah. Hatch? Yes. Really? Hatch is huh. on season two of House of Villains. They announced the cast officially today. Uh, it should be interesting. He has not been on any competitive show, I believe, since All Stars. I was going to say, nobody's going to know who he is. <laughs> oh, he, he is the OG winner survivor. Well, I mean, nobody else. Like, it seemed like none of the other contestants knew who Fair Play was at all. Oh, yeah. Except yeah. for one or two, maybe. So. Yeah, it was not. People were like, oh, fair play. Oh, you lied about grandma. That's that's cute. Yeah, <laughs> you know, that was that's small potatoes. Now, mm-hmm. back then, that was a big deal. Small potatoes today. So uh, I won't spoil House of Villains, but it's like Big Brother, but very self-aware. That's how I kind of viewed the first season. So we'll see if they change anything about season two. But yeah, Hatch is on season two. Uh, that is on Peacock, by the way, for those who have Peacock. All right, let's go through this episode. So the previously on Survivor starts with reminding us that Maria and Tevin have extra votes. And I'm like, oh, the, the, to me, when they, they remind you about something like that, that means that, I mean, it's, it's kind of a spoiler. Happen. Well, to be fair, the whole thing was just who has what. So Maria and Tevin have an extra vote. Tiffany has an idol. Maria has, um, or not Maria, sorry, Jem has the, the note the from the advantage, beware. Yeah. yeah, you know, Ben doesn't have a boat, vote. Vote. Mm-hmm. And then it ended with Banu's vote out, which I'm like, is this necessary again to see? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I but, knew that Yanni wasn't going back to tribal, is what I was trying to say. But if Yanni had gone back to tribal tonight, I would not have brought this up and I would have ignored it. <laughs> right. And yeah. pretended like I knew the whole time that Yanni was going again. Yeah, because Maria's extra vote, I mean, it did come into play, but it wasn't. She used it. Wasn't necessarily important. It was I would say. pointless, but she used yeah. it. That's for sure. Mm hmm. All right, so we're reminded of that, which means that Yanu is going to be safe tonight, uh, which does undercut a little bit the emotional reaction. But I have to oh, point I out still that I was happy. Okay, good. Yeah. I've pointed out that the show is edited for normal people who do not know how to order those 20 seasons <laughs> in the right order on the journey. Not for us super fans who do know how to order them. I don't know how to order them. I know. That's what I'm saying. Like it, the season is they're going for more mass appeal. Yeah. So they got to remind, and I understand. I'm not, and that's, I'm not belittling anybody. I'm saying I understand why the show is putting it there. But it, for me, it was like, oh, so it's going to be not Yanu who's going tribal. I didn't know. I thought it was me, Nami, frankly, because pre immunity challenge, there was almost no Nami content. It felt like to me outside of what was required because somebody found a beware advantage. Mm-hmm. I was like, oh, so Nami's going to go tribal because we're going to get a ton of Nami content here at the end. No. That wasn't the case at all. Tonight was the Yanu and Sega show. We should know that that's the case because usually the tribe that goes to tribe will get some sort of setup of who's going home. 
Yeah, it's not consistent. And maybe I'm saying that and I'm wrong. And that's possible. I feel like you might be a little, I might a be little a, bit wrong. It'd though. be the first time I've ever yes. been wrong in my entire life. The I've never said time. anything wrong. All right. So, yeah. Tiffany says she's happy with who's left on Yanu. Mm-hmm. And basically, I don't even know why we're spending time on Yanu, by the way. Could, like, for the love of everything, we should have skunked Yanu this episode. But I want to point out that we did start with what Tiffany's point of view is. I don't know. We kind of get everybody's point of view on Yanu tonight. Yeah, we heard from everyone. I, it was Tiffany was first and Kenzie then Q, I think. Yeah. But, but yeah, it was, it was a little bit unnecessary considering where we're at. But at the same time, I think it would have felt weird if we didn't check in with Yanu because that's all we've done so far. So <sighs> I am so over Yanu. Yeah. Like, I, we already know where everyone is. Can we move on? That's my, my, that's my question. So they call themselves the worst tribe ever. And anyone who is a super fan is going to be like, no, <laughs> there are many tribes I can name who are worse than Yanu. Uh, of course, the most infamous being Oolong. Mm-hmm. Duh. So I'm glad when Jeff gave the stats, he said, you have set records for the new era. Yeah. Because had he said anything else, we all have been like, is, are you crazy? Because when players are like, oh, we're the worst tribe ever. It's like, mm, no. But the new era is all that counts. Yes, I guess. And I think that's what's important when it comes to the next returnee season. As much as we hate to say it, I really think that the returnee season that they do for, I assume, 50. Uh, though I did make a video all about, now it's on Patreon, all about when is the next attorney season with proof. And for those who are on Patreon, keep it to yourself. It's top secret, all right? <laughs> it's top secret information. Uh, anyways, so I think the next attorney season will be 50. And I think it's just going to be new era. I think we're just, I don't think we're ever going to see the likes of Christian Ubiqui back. I don't think so. Angelina, which is unfortunate. The Dave vs. Clive people are really who I want. Edge of Extinction too with like Devons. Like those are the two seasons. I'm like, ah, some of those people always say they've come back. Even War Dog. Do you remember War Dog? No. See? But I remember War Dog. I'm glad. <laughs> Terrible you do. challenges. <laughs> Super buff still. I don't know how. Anyway, so Yeah. All right, so we have the theme song. And I want to point this out. This is another red herring, as it turned out. Mm-hmm. If you watch the theme song, I even showed it to Mary and she was like, okay, whatever. It's a red herring. Cause I, this is before I knew. Mm-hmm. So the, all the, if you watch it again, this is the official one. Don't watch some fan made one. All the th- shots it shows of like, it shows like somebody doing something and then like close up of their face. But Jem, it was her second shot was her arms in the air. Like she's the winner, but everyone else does not get that. But Jem gets voted off tonight. So obviously that was just a red herring the whole time. And I just noticed it this week. Yeah. But I was like, I, I was like, I thought I was onto something. I was like, oh, I didn't really notice this before. I even text Rebecca about it. And she has not watched the episode yet because <laughs> she's busy. Tonight. Can you delete your text? <laughs> no, no, I didn't tell her. No, I can I delete my text. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Rebecca, just ignore that. I was just I was just goofing. No, I just told her to look at the shots and tell me what she thinks. But we'll see. She'll probably watch the episode when she and then she'll know. Yeah. Yeah. So anyways, it's another another red herring. And I really appreciate all the red herrings this season. So, Mary. I mean, how many winners have had a victory shot like that in the D. D was the last one. It just okay. happened. Okay. She was you she was literally know. smashing a thing in her she had her name high up in the air. And that's why I was like, I'm no, like No, no, no. No, no, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about like the the V for victory hand oh, raise. How are you talking about? I don't know, think they have ever done that before. Okay. But I with all the red herrings, I just didn't know. I'm mean, Jamila. Uh hopefully yeah. I said the night right for once. I said night. Can you say the right words? Hopefully I said that right for once. Uh, anyways, Jem, she, you know, she had the winner quote in episode one. I was like, maybe they are doing the most obvious one. She had the direct winner quote saying, I'm going to win, puts her arms up in a V. <laughs> no. 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 Not quite. No. So anyways. I think to- with this many red herrings, our winner analysis is going to get crazy. Yeah, you could definitely do a whole video about how many winner or winner hints slash red herrings there have been yeah uh, just already I i've think. never done a video on red herrings i've done video i've done a video on all the like the winter hints they did from like 33 through 40 might be time to do one after the season on the new era winter hints and are they consistent amongst one you know 41 through 46 mm-hmm. i don't know that's a good idea but i do want to point out that uh that gem is not the winner so no. <laughs> go mark her off our list because we had a couple of things for her She's Just gone. in case you were wondering. In case you were wondering. All right, Mary. So Ben says, we go over to Sega. And ben says, surviving on Survivor. He, it might, it's it, tough. 
it's tough but but yeah go ahead no but i mean he's had survival experience because he's hung out in vans with other musicians with only like three bucks for Taco Bell. Yeah. So Taco Bell. Getting same the, thing. Get, catching the strays. <laughs> ben is a, I don't know, pop culture media. If that's right. Pop culture media. Is that, he just says so many things that are copyrighted. Is that the right word? <laughs> and I'm surprised they allow, like you mentioned Ozzy Osbourne tonight. He's mentioned Oasis multiple times, Nicolas Cage multiple times. Taco Bell's over here catching a stray. I mean, Ben Wait, you just think like, they had to like pay copyright permission to, for him to say no, the words no, Taco no. Bell. I'm just saying like that's the way, it's almost like that's how Ben talks all the time. Yeah. Because even we see when he's talking with Charlie, they're naming songs again. I don't know mm-hmm. if he's doing Metallica again, but Charlie, I'm pretty sure he's doing Swift again. <laughs> I'm sure somebody could tell us what they are. I text her back, but she wasn't watching, so I, I don't have confirmation on that. But I'm sure somebody will let us know if yeah. Charlie was doing Taylor Swift and Ben's doing Metallica again. Yeah, we definitely had a lot more Ben comment content in this episode i thought this was ben's boot episode after right. that v for victory from gem boy right. was i wrong boy were you wrong i mean gem was part of charlie's angels mm-hmm. we saw how quickly that flipped we thought charlie's angels was going to be the the alliance that carried through out of sega but I guess apparently not. not there's no re before coming out of sega mm-hmm. but- I, I mean i think strategically that probably was the best sense or that that made the most sense I didn't think this was a great episode for Jem, despite the red herring that you found mm-hmm. for her. I, and I think that Charlie's right. I think it makes more sense to take Ben than it did to take Jem. There's so much content on Jem and Ben. The whole episode I was like, holy crap, I missed that. Oh, well, I didn't know it was a red herring at the time. It's like, I missed that shot. And Jem's important all of a sudden. I mean, she was kind of important before. And now she's really important. And, and Ben's important. And Ben's going to go. And Jem's going to. Nope. No. Nope. Nope. So you were surprised. Good. I was. Good. I was a little bit surprised. Yeah. And it, I'm glad. As I said, I, yeah. I, the season's going to end and I'm going to, hopefully my mind's blown like Gabler when Gabler won. <laughs> hopefully my mind's blown again. I love when that happens. All right. So Mariah worries about Ben connecting with Charlie because they, she says they go off for hours at a time just mm-hmm. talking music. Jem mm-hmm. says Ben or Tim are next. And Charlie, they're all like dancing on the beach. Now, what kind of dance are they learning here, Mary? The Is it the salsa? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And Charlie's hips don't lie. <laughs> like Shakira, his hips don't lie. I mean, this was another fun scene. Again, I was like, "Is this really that important?" The only, I guess, the only way it did come up to be important was how because Charlie compared salsa dancing to him and Maria's alliance and how they're you know trying to balance the game and make sure they make the right moves. So. I mean, it was kind of a reach for a for an al- an, an analogy, I thought. But at the same time, it was just like, I don't know. I, it was one of those things that I, I was like, is this really important? I guess I don't really see how it's important, but it came up again at Tribal. So I guess they had to throw it in there. It was fun. Yeah. But. I, well, I mean, last okay. week they had Mariah. Here's the jumping. thing. Last week they had Mariah jumping. And as you said, to you, it felt more Charlie focused. Mm-hmm. And. This week they had the salsa thing and it kind of ended with Charlie. It was Charlie. Focus, so yeah. this Still, is a hint that they do sometimes. And we mentioned it last season with Dean or Big Toe. And I remember, I think the very first season we actually podcasted like more than two podcasts was Winners at War. Uh, don't go back. I mean, you can't listen to them. They're here on the channel. Rough times for podcasting. We did not know what we were doing yet. We had, we was not, not consistent. That was during COVID. So we did it more. Uh, anyways, point being is that season we noticed how they would spend, they would randomly go to Tony's tribe pre-merge and just show a scene of Tony doing something funny or silly. And that mm-hmm. was all the content that tribe got that episode because yeah. they won the immunity challenge. And we were like, is this, this is super obvious, right? They're spending. So here we are with 90 minute episodes, better editing than back then mm-hmm. uh, in terms of evening it out more in terms balanced, of people getting yeah. yeah more balanced i guess the right word whether it's better or not is up to you but it's more balanced so should we be paying more attention to charlie i am paying attention to charlie back-to-back weeks of scenes that are kind of silly making you like somebody and charlie did get the shot with maria mm-hmm. where it showed denise and uh malcolm yeah though malcolm did lose that season is charlie gonna reverse the malcolm curse maybe I'm just throwing it out there. Well, I think also, it needs to be brought up. This is jumping out a little bit, but also with Charlie, 
he was leaning towards keeping Ben and Maria was leaning towards keeping Jim. See? And ended up going Charlie's way. As we're talking, you're convincing me to move, to me to move Charlie up my rankings. Well, Charlie's pretty high on my rankings. So I, I think that he definitely still has good content. I haven't seen anything negative about him. And it's pretty smart content. So His hips don't lie, Mary. It's, his hips don't lie. His hips don't lie. It was a Dang, funny... I think Charlie just moved into my top three. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, for real. Like, I had Glad nobody I a solid you. on for number three. I think I might do that. Well. Whew, all but, right. Well, hey, that's why I said. I am not locked in on anybody at the moment. I actually need to see a confessional counter for this episode. I haven't seen it yet. We'll do that tomorrow with Rebecca. Because uh, I want to see what the confessional count was for these tribes that they didn't go to tribal, especially Yanu, right? Mm-hmm. Yanu got some content. It seemed like they got important content still. Mm-hmm. And Nami got skunked. And this whole time we've been saying Nami and Yanu are important. Sika's not important. Right. Well, Sika tonight did go to tribal. So it was probably a big factor in the terms of their content. But I felt like Nami kind of got skunked. Mm-hmm. So is the winner from Yanu? Because Yanu never gets skunked. Though, to be fair, Yanu's only had one opportunity. He did not get skunked. And Survivor can't pass up the emotional moments that Yanu gave them tonight. It is true. Yeah. And next week's merge story. So we'll really be able to parse through who's important, who's not, you know, post like next week with merge story and the week after. Those mm-hmm. are really the big weeks mm-hmm. for figuring it out. And I mean, there's some people right now we know are just like are not Liz and her fat stacks of cash. All right. Right. She ain't winning. <laughs> she ain't winning. Are you sure? I know. I'm trying. You know, every every day I think what's the way I can pitch to Liz to just share a little bit of her fat stacks of cash with us. To sponsor the podcast. And every day I realize she doesn't have time to talk to us. She's rich. We're poor peasants doing podcasts. We don't even video our faces. You think we can afford her to podcast to sponsor our podcast? I'm like, what if I messaged her and I asked and she said, I don't want you showing your faces. You're ugly. You know, how (laughs) devastating would that be to me? I already know this. So you don't need Liz to tell you. You're beautiful, Mary. Well, thank you. (laughs) But I don't need Liz to tell me I'm ugly. No man can handle her, including me. I cannot <laughs> handle the potential insult that I came up with in my own head from her. All right, so let's move on. So we get the little <laughs> bit of Nami content mm-hmm. comes here where it's an idol hunt and Hunter finds the, well, he finds the bear wear advantage. Hold so. on, hold on. Before he finds it, I want to talk about something. Seems like we get Venus's focus here. Hunter and Venus. Though Hunter gets it because he finds he beware. Venus gets focus here. Then there's really no reason because she doesn't even see Hunter get her or nothing. But we get her side of the story mm-hmm. in a way, which I thought was interesting. People said she's important. I'm seeing her importance. I don't see her winning. Mm-hmm. I see her importance. Yes. We don't really. Do we get any Tevin or Soda content tonight? Tevin does have one confessional during this. And Soda also gets one. Are you looking at a counter right now? No. Oh, okay. I'm looking at my notes. Oh, okay. Because they're right, that cool. detailed. And Liz got one, too, because yes. <laughs> Liz says, I'm not looking. And like, obviously, we all knew she didn't need to look because, of course, Mary, go ahead. Her fat stacks of cash. She doesn't need an idol. She can buy her win. We mm-hmm. already know this. This is basic knowledge. All right. Venus follows Hunter as he looks. And Venus tells Hunter right to his face. And this is the kind of stuff that tells me I'm like, how can Venus win when she just says this? She's like, no, Hunter, I don't want to vote you off because you're a meat shield. Mm-hmm. Like, Is that respectful? I mean, Hunter's like a good guy. So he's just like, you know, takes it. Right. <laughs> but, well, there's ways of saying things that mean you're a meat shell and can be said in a kind way that are not, you know, your your threat. I'm going to keep your. Yeah. Own. The way I, she said it was like, you're the opposition to me, not, hey, let's work yes. together because you could. Yeah. Because we could benefit each other. Yeah. It wasn't like that at all. Right. Right. Yeah. Because she just said, oh, when we get to the merge, you know, people are going to be coming after you. So I understand why you're looking for the idol. And so Hunter says, so are you coming after me? Are you going to vote for me? Oh, no, I want to keep you because you're a meat shield. It's just like, no, no, no trying to work mm-hmm. with him. Just like stating things. So, yeah. yes, I, I don't see Venus winning. I honestly didn't think this was a great interaction for Hunter either, because when Venus says, oh, I'm rooting for you to get an idol. I mean, he's just like, I'm rooting for Nami to win. Like, <laughs> he doesn't care about her, and he knows she's well, on the she bottom. Well, she doesn't care about him. Right. So there's, like, no yeah. attempt to in a relationship on either side. And I think, like, I'm not saying I would do any better. I'm just saying, I I don't know. They didn't, neither of them maybe came out looking great in this episode, except for the fact that, I mean, Hunter did find the beware advantage. 
He should be able to get it next week once there's a merge. Um, the the idol, obviously. And again, jumping ahead, I mean, he put his neck out there for doing the task. Mm-hmm. The journey, you mean? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, so, so like, I think everybody knows. Oh, another thing I thought was interesting about him was later on in the episode, Charlie's talking and he said, you know, we don't have a hunter or a Q on our tribe. Like, obviously, Hunter and Q are both going to be big targets later on. Why Q? They barely can win. And it's not even because of Q. Yanu has trouble winning. Like, Q's the only competent person on the tribe, I guess, in terms of challenges. But Tiffany not, is he all, just looks ripped. I mean, I think he yes, just looks ripped. It's perceptions. But, anyways, that was all the content we got this yeah. week from Nami was the idol hunt and a little tiff conversation between hunter and venus and liz reminding us that she is rich she doesn't need idols she can just mm-hmm. she literally lays around yes. and knows she's gonna win all right that's how like liz just knows all right yes yeah, she wasn't gonna look for the idol because <sighs> she loses her shoes so she yeah. would just lose the idols yeah but yeah liz, i don't understand any of her logic or any of her reasoning but whatever that's what makes us poor and yes. her rich because we don't understand that's- the rich. You know, we didn't get on survivor and she no did, so. we can't even afford video cams for our faces okay that's True. how poor we are mary <laughs> liz probably owns a camera that's 16k resolution i don't even know if that, i don't even know if that exists but she probably owns it all right get that through everyone's heads all right so hunter finds the uh beware advantage and it's clarified that if he loses if they don't ever go to you know the tribal that he'll have another opportunity which was another hint that they weren't going to tribal tonight. Yeah. So I guess at that point I should have known it was Sega based on the previously on Survivor and then that, but I didn't really register at that point. I thought Nami was going because you're getting so little content, felt like. Anyways, so we go over to Yanu and Q is like, I'm tired of the bamboo and I might quit. Now, Mary, you were over there. I think you were next to me. You were like, oh, told you, told you. <laughs> what do you, how do you feel? A little silly. Yeah. No, I mean, I- it was weird that he said something a couple of episodes ago about quitting. And then again, he says it in this, this episode. And I'm like, seriously, like if they went to tribal again, I was kind of afraid he was going to go home. But then, you know, cut to him talking to Tiffany. About, oh, no, I never cut. I would never quit for real. I'm just saying that so Kinsey feels safe. And it but makes he sense. mentioned it like last week or two weeks ago too, yeah. right? But that's but that's what I was saying. Like he mentioned it a couple weeks ago, so I, I'm I'm feeling like at some point it's going to be important because it's like happened. It'll get brought up, right? Yeah. So I don't know. I did like in this scene here. We got the the editing of Kenzie saying, "What do you got? What are y'all talking about?" Like mm, several times. Yeah. <laughs> that was pretty funny. And then they always gave the answer from Tiffany too. Yes, Tiffany always answers because I'm sure every time Q is just like seriously. You know, he was like the parent of a five-year-old child and the five-year-old child's like, uh, what are you guys talking about? What are you guys talking about? What are you guys talking Like, it's, we're not, can you just like, do we, do we, do I have to answer every question? Tiffany's like a good mom just answering. Yeah. Q's over. Q's like annoyed at the kid. Mm-hmm. That's how it looks. Yeah. <laughs> so this wasn't a great, uh, great for Kinsey if you want her to be a winner because that, that kind of made her look a little silly, but at the same time, it was just fun. I don't, mm-hmm. I don't know. It was kind of funny. I mean, she's not wrong. You, you do need to, I guess, know what's going on at all times if you can. But you shouldn't be just every single time you walk up saying the exact same question. What are y'all talking about? Like, I don't uh-huh. And also, like, how would you do that? How do you approach two people who are talking and you want to know what they're talking about, but you don't want to cro- come across as being rude? I mean, do you obviously you can't just ask because that's yeah. what kenzie has been doing. I don't know. I don't know the answer. Or anything interesting, maybe you just like change up the question. Anything interesting happening or? Do you have to ask every time they talk? Because maybe that's normal and it's just being played here because we're trying to show that Kenzie's not going to win. Yeah. I mean, that's kind of what I'm thinking. Like, I'm assuming that that anytime a person comes across two other people, they're going to say something to the effect of what are y'all talking about? I think it's just funny that she says like the exact same words every time. Mm-hmm. Maybe that was just what was so annoying. And I remember the last time they did a montage like this. I believe it was Aubrey Brocco in season 38, Edge of Extinction, when she was going up to everybody saying, you're my number one or no, mm-hmm. you, when me wasn't that. Um, and I'm sure they've done her montage since just the one I remember where she's always like talk to people the way she talks to them or what she asks. They montage that. And then in winners at war, when Nick just like slides into conversations without saying a word, people were annoyed by that. They did a mm. montage of it. And I believe 
it was 42, 43. There was a lady and I'll look up what her name is real quick who would, um, go up to people and say, you're my number one. You're my number one. You're my, that's where I was getting the number one thing from. And every time they do a montage like this, it's, they don't do that to winners. Yeah. They don't do, they don't do that to winners. Mm -hmm. Winners do not get that treatment. Right. But again, there's so many red herrings this season. Maybe all the things they normally do to, uh, people who don't win, they're going to do to the winner. Now I don't want to get too (laughs) deep in the rabbit hole on that. Let's wait till we get later in the season. where like, everyone here has been given crap edits or something. Mm -hmm. Which would be a bad way to tell a story, by the way, if they did that uh, for the regular person who's watching the show. Uh, anyways, let me double check. I'm trying to look here, see if I can get the person's name who didn't. You're my number one. You're my number one. It might have been 42. All right. Uh, anyways, point They've being been- is that they could be doing unusual edits this season or showing more flaws. But I doubt that a montage like this would be on the winner. Right. In episode five. I agree. So that was pretty much the Yanu content. Um, cut back over to swathy see in season 42 she was like sammy she was only 19 years old yes you're welcome america now we know <laughs> all right now we know <laughs> the point is don't ask a lot of annoying questions oh uh, like that could have been over the course of 12 <laughs> days or 11 days and just like six times they showed sure you know what i mean Still, it's all perspective it's all perception it is all per- perception and you're not going to be able to make everyone happy just like in real life in survivor you're going to annoy like no matter who you are you're probably going to annoy someone at some point and it's okay. All right. So moving on, Tim talks about pooping and how he hasn't pooped. So I love when there's poop talk. That on was Survivor. great. And that was basically his whole content, except for when he talks to Jim. So once again, not great for Tim. I was debating this year, Mary, and even last year I debated this about doing an April Fool's video where it's f- f- five times survivors needed to poop or something like that. It's something mm. five times in survivor and poop. And I couldn't figure out the idea. That's why I haven't <laughs> made it. But like Bruce in season 12 gets evacuated from the show because he can't poop. No, oh, okay. I believe something with Shane and poop happened his season. I forget. Or maybe it was it Shane. I don't know. But there's anyways, if anyone wants to name poop moments in survivor list them, I might do for 2025. I've already made my 2024 one. And I assume by time 2025 rolls around, most people will forget that I even mentioned this was an idea I had in my head. And then it will be a surprise for most people. But yeah, I was going to do an April Fool's video about poop and Survivor, but I didn't have enough. Of course. I didn't have enough moments to make a video out of it. But pl- if you have one, please comment it and I will <laughs> screenshot to remind myself. All right. Yes. Poop and Survivor. Go ahead, Mary. Okay. So I liked how Tim approached this with Jim. <laughs> Basically, he, they're walking along and he's like, okay, so you, what did you do with the idol or, or whatever, you know? And Jim did a good job. I think lying and covering up and saying, no, I wish I had it. I'm on the bottom. You know, I, I'll vote with you. But Tim doesn't really believe her. Now he does get a little too much aggressive, I think, here when he's like, you're really tight with Mariah. I heard you're the leader of a girl's alliance. And Jim's like, what? No, I'm not. What girls? There's no girls alliance. What are you talking about? Mm-hmm. Um, So it was like, you know, two opponents going back and forth. And I enjoyed this scene. I don't think either of them like, we're just amazing at it, but they're both trying, you know, I, I don't know if I could do better. Um, but yeah, both of them were trying to like get something out of the other person. And I mean, ultimately Jim went home. So I guess yeah. Tim was the winner of that fight. I don't know. Weirdly, because we've talked about Tim was skunk the past yeah. weeks and they keep putting good stuff about him in secret scenes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I don't know. I don't, I don't think, know. I still don't think Tim's going very far. I thought it, I thought for sure Tim or Ben was gone tonight. It was like everything so far had been led up to it. So I am pleasantly surprised that Jem yeah. went. Not that I, I mean, I thought Jem was, I had her high on my rankings, if mm-hmm. I recall. And even after the whole victory, V for victory in the, uh, the theme song, I was like, all right, well, Jem's got to go in my top three, right? No. No. Nope. No. So don't I feel silly. Who the heck is Tim on the show still? He's a parent. And He's he, a parent who thinks... He, his he, number one is Maria. Yeah. Which, ooh, by the way, is not that's not her number well, one. Well, he tells the guys his number one's Maria. I think I think it's smart not to tell people who your number one is. But he mentioned it outside of that conversation with them. You mentioned how him and Maria have a parent connection. Yeah, he did. I think his number one's still Ben. You think so? I could be wrong, but based on what we've seen. Mm-hmm. But of course we could, you know, not really be seeing what's really going on with Ben and Maria. 
But yeah, so far we we just keep being told, oh, Ben and Tim, Ben and Tim, they're together, Ben and Tim. So that's what we're being told. But you're Mm. right. We hear so rarely from Tim that that could not be the case in Tim's mind. In Tim's mind, it might actually be Maria. Yeah, I don't know because we don't really know much about Tim. Mm -hmm. But we actually got some Tim content for the first time in like three episodes. So (laughs) now everything, by the way, about Jem is coming with a different perspective now knowing she got voted off. So Jem's like, I am so good at lying. Usually at home when I lie with my husband, I giggle. Mm -hmm. Here I'm not giggling. Yeah. It's just like, it's all different perspective, all different perspective. Now that I know she got voted off at the time, I was like, ooh, winner content. <laughs> <laughs> nope, she's going home to her husband. <laughs> I know, it's all different perspective. Hey, that's what Sean wanted the last season. <laughs> that's why he quit. That's why he quit. Yeah. Also, that's why I mean, Yanu's not the worst. Lulu was still worse than Yanu. Yanu is better than Lulu was. The original Lulu. Because they didn't original have two quitters. Lulu. Yeah, it really is the quitters that does it. And yeah. Lulu is the biggest mess of a tribe. Between Brandon, Hannah, and Sean, there's no Brand. There's there's a Bonu, and that's about it. Yeah. Jelinski was something, don't get me wrong, but Bonu was really the only truly huge mess on that. I mean, Jelinski was a mess too. Two versus three. Let's put it that way. There's three messes on Lulu, two messes on, on the Ani tribe. So anyways, Fair. I'm just like debating here. Like, are they worse than Lulu? I don't think so. Let me know in the comments if you all think Yanni's worse than Lulu. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm crazy. No. Maybe Venus is going to win. I mean, I feel like quitting is usually worse than just losing. Definitely constantly. drives up the fan engagement of angry comments on videos. I'll tell you that. That's true. Oh, about how angry people have been ever since Survivor 41. I mean, don't get me wrong. 41 sucked. Don't get me wrong. It was a crappy season. But people just like three and a half years later still going off about it. However many years later it's been. All right. So. And how and how it's anyways, they, everything gets connected back to 41. Let me tell you when you're angry, mm-hmm. everything. Also, this is going to be funny to some people who read every comment. Did you know about Australian Survivor, Mary? What? I've never heard of I've it. I've never heard of it. Either. Did you know it's better than American Survivor? What? What? No, I don't read 50 comments about that every day. What? No. Australian Survivor is pretty good, by the way. I have nothing against it. I see so many comments where like so much better than U.S. Survivor. As you watch like one person get zero professionals for nine episodes and I'm like, Okay, <laughs> depends on what our priorities are, I guess. I like to get to know everyone. Yeah. Now, if you want to say casting of Australian Survivor is better, I will. I will not see her and argue, mm. but I will say that the editing of Australian Survivor is what makes me not watch it nearly as much. Yeah. So, anyways, because people always ask, and I guess I'd answer on a podcast. Okay. <laughs> Tim asked Jem about the viewer advantages. She says, and she's and says she's the leader of the girls' alliance. But Tim, I mean, you said Tim won this. But like, who thought Tim was going to be the one to suss this out? But I don't think it's even the reason Jem got voted off tonight, was it? Was thinking she had the beware advantage? Why did she go? What is the ultimate reason Jem won tonight? I mean, I think it was because she was, she just went crazy. Yeah. I mean, she went way too hard, way too quick. Yeah. Like cornering people while holding a machete with your <laughs> arms, funny. with your arms crossed, interrogating them yeah, automatically just puts a big red flag, especially mm-hmm. with this tribe of people who so far have just been chill and vibing and everything it's all the vibe of the tribe yeah so she just like if she was in a different scenario you know playing with different people she was on yanu this probably fit right in maybe yeah her interrogation would have been cute it's like that's what i do all the time yeah let's play hard let's go get it yeah but with this tribe it didn't pan out well at all and and she just came across as too aggressive and ultimately i think that's why she went home because because of that. Um, I mean, we know that Charlie's tight with Ben and he didn't really want Ben going out. And Charlie's tight with Maria. So obviously Charlie nor Maria were going. Right. Charlie and Maria were the swing alliance. Charlie wanted to keep Ben over Jim because he said Ben would be a charismatic shield. Interesting. He, he would be a target. For but, being so so vibrant as a person. Yeah. Be, yeah. And social and likable. So, And he didn't really feel like Jim would be that shield for them. And here she is at the same time, like basically making enemies out of the tribe. Mm-hmm. So her, I think, negatives just outweighed her positives. And nobody knew she had the bear. I, I still think nobody knew she had, even had the idol in her pocket, which that was as it should be. I mean, when you get an idol, don't talk about it. So she did right there. <laughs> but but yeah, I mean, I feel like on paper, like if you just list out all the qualities of each of them, Ben's the one you want to go with. But also, you should, 
go with your gut. But yeah, Ben was likable. He's charismatic. He's going to be a target. He's going to be somebody you can trust and take with you, but at the same time, kind of like push him out in front of you a little bit. This so, is why I married you because you're super smart. Thanks. Anytime, babe. So you were talking about Jem and, yeah. and then I see her doing these interrogations yeah. and I'm like, how do you think she's a winner? Because I, if, if, if there's anything anybody's learned over the, what, the six, seven seasons we've been podcasting, right? And including other shows we podcast about occasionally, like the Traders or Amazing Race. Uh, I'm big into conspiracies in terms of Survivor. I'm big into winner edits mm-hmm. and always trying to, I'm always like, this is a murder mystery. Maybe conspiracy is the wrong word. Everything to me is a murder mystery. Sometimes it can be super straightforward. Sometimes it's so obvious, Wesley, you're overlooking it because it's so obvious. Mm-hmm. That's what I get for watching so much Survivor. Right. As well, I start getting into like going off the deep end. Yes. And I feel like you're looking at all those tiny little things and mm-hmm. sometimes you miss the big picture of like, well, this person still has to be likable. That is a lifelong <laughs> problem. I am. I fixate on the little things yeah. and I miss the big picture if I care. If I don't care, I see the big picture of things. If I don't care about something, I see the big picture. I don't care about the minute details, but if I really care, I like ignore the big picture for the minute details. The yeah. real problem, I'm, yeah. I'm aware. Well, That's why you watch those uh, story videos. And it's like, it's like I, you'll see how much I focus on these minute details, but I, when I'm writing the scripts for those, I'm like, okay, but what is the big picture of what's this story about? So thankfully, I can get both in there. But let me tell you, when I take notes on those story videos, it's all, it's like minute details. And so when it gets to actually writing the script and editing, and I say this because it lets everybody know, like, how do I think? It's like, even when I'm doing that, and I already know the result. I'm still focusing on my new details mm-hmm. and I'll go in and I'll edit out my new details that really aren't important. And then I'm like, OK, but what's the big picture of like, what is the, the point of this story that we're doing right now? So. But when we're doing these like these podcasts right after the episode, I haven't had time. I don't even know where we're going with this yeah. yet. So I don't have the tw- nobody has 2020 hindsight. No. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Which is why story videos can be accurate. And then here I am on a podcast like. Focusing on murder mysteries and conspiracy theories. And, and so anyways, hopefully uh, it gives some insight into my thinking for some right. people who are like, why does this dude make a bunch of unnecessary jokes and get off topic? Which I see, <laughs> of course, which will never stop, by the way. That's just who I am. And also, why do I get focused on my new, new my new details? This is why. So anyways, we go to the immunity challenge, Mary. Yes. And Jeff disses Yanu. Oh, my gosh. Best diss of the whole season this so far. This is pretty funny. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, the last tribe to lose, also known as the the, losers. The losers, everyone says. And then just like, thought you were going to say Yanu. Dang, I mean, just coming in cold. Yeah, big burn. It was pretty funny. Um, Yeah. So the. He does also clarify all the uh, records they've set for the new era. Yes. For the new era. And I don't. It was like longest time without Flint. Yes. Longest time without Flint was Flint was the record they actually made. And then if they had lost, they would have got the record for longest losing streak in the new era. But or how who has a longer losing streak in the new era than them? I don't know. Because they've lost every immunity. Unless they mean the reward reward challenge. Yes. He's just talking about. He just said challenge. Okay. I think. I think. Because we're talking about immunity challenges. I'm like, they've lost four episodes in a row. Like, who else has lost more than four? But with the reward challenge, I might have gotten in the way of that losing streak. Yeah, I think he, he okay. said losing streak. So this is where the trivia guys come in. That's why I go to Survivor Wiki and they look at them for trivia because mm. this is not my forte. <laughs> yeah. So thankfully, they didn't make a new record in that respect. Yeah, as as it, it would have been. Could you imagine people would have been over the, um, this season would have been so <laughs> trash <laughs> pre-merge if they had they gone again. I mean, the, the Sega going tonight actually somewhat saved somewhat yeah. saved the pre-merge. Yeah. All right, Mary, so this immunity challenge, tell us all about it. So it's a large obstacle course you have to crawl through and grab keys in the right order, which unlocks a hook that you use to untwist a rope to release sandbags. And then you launch the sandbags using the giant slingshot at three targets. And every player has to hit one target. So it can't just have Hunter hitting all the targets, which I appreciate when they do that. Um, basically, Nami blasts through it and gets done first. I mean, it wasn't. It, there were times where they were all neck and neck, but once it's again, a good thing Hunter couldn't just do all of the targets at the end because they would have won with like another 10 minutes to spare. Yeah, basically. <laughs> Though, to be fair, the way it was edited. Now, I know it's I understand it's the way it was edited. It was edited as if Tevin missed one, maybe two and then got one. And then the next person, I believe, is Venus got it on a first shot and Hunter on a first shot. Just the way it was edited. That may mm-hmm. not have been how it actually happened. Yeah. 
Either way, they, they looked really strong. They, there was the point yeah. of the edit, though, is that they missed once and they made the other three mm-hmm. right in a row. Just the way it was edited. Yeah. So at some point, by the way, Soda called Venus like a stick bug or something like that during the chat. Did she? I caught that. I was like, kind of came out of nowhere, in my opinion. I'm like, she, yeah, she's like, so this is not about Venus being like a walking stick bug. I Maybe because she looks so thin with her mic pack on her back. I don't know. I mean, she is thin, but. I don't know. I aspire I not to be that thin, but to have someone be like, Wesley, you walking stick bug. That'd be nice. Thanks. I can say that now. Wesley, you walking stick it's bug. It's not true, though. <laughs> it's, <laughs> now, now, you, now you've done the felony of lying. You oh. shall go to Survivor Jail, okay. which is not the sanctuary. Okay. So maybe it is the sanctuary for some. Hey, they haven't done the sanctuary as whole. They, they don't do it in the pre-merge. I think it's all post-merge sanctuary. Like they have the sanctuary once. I think it's all post merge. Sure. Where know. good things happen. Everyone goes, uh, uh. all right. That's so true. Nami gets first again. Mm-hmm. And it's a close battle. Very close second. between Sega and Yanu. I admit when Yanu won, I even the editing made me even feel I don't even care about these people. Mm-hmm. I mean, to that level. I mean, the slow mo was pretty cool. Yeah. Yes, they did the slow mo. <laughs> this is always the one I refer to in 41. When Ua, I think that was a tribe name, the green tribe and 41 missed. Ricard did a shot. He missed. Mm-hmm. And then another tribe won. And I'm like, why do they do slow-mo on the shot that missed? Because they wanted you to feel bad for that tribe. Though I was not feeling bad for that tribe at all. Miscalculation on their part. Thinking I cared about them. But Yanu, I somewhat cared about because they succeeded. Now, had they yeah. shown a miss in slow-mo, I'd be like, that just made them look stupid. But now in slow motion. Yeah. <laughs> No, it was cool. Thankfully, no one films me in slow motion. It'd it be the same thing. It was epic. Yeah. That's why nobody films me in slow motion. You think I'm being epic around here? I don't <laughs> no. even video cam on the podcast. All right. So, yes, Tim, Hunter, and Q get to go on this journey because it wasn't Hunter that decided who got to go on the journey. Well, Nami picked who, go, who went on the journey and Hunter volunteered. Oh, okay. And then Hunter asked, is anyone else going to volunteer? Or does anyone want to volunteer? And Tim volunteered right away. And then basically Tiffany said at the same time as Q, I guess they'd already talked about it. So oh, yeah. okay. Just like, in case it ever happened. Yeah. Maybe. Like Q's going to go right as he yeah. raised his hand. So, um, yeah. This is the only journey I actually liked. This was, this was a good one. It's the I only it. one I've ever liked. Mm-hmm. Only one. Be clear. If I've ever said I liked one in the past, I take it back. This is the only one I actually ever liked because survivor knowledge. Why can't every journey be survivor knowledge? I love this. This is great. And I like that they had to, as a group, decide who was going to do it. You know, only one, like, only one person could do it. Yes. Um, there was an option to get out of it. That was, the, I was yes. like, when there's an option to get yes. out of it, there should be an option. It should not be forced. I mean, Somebody, everyone has to draw a rock out of this bag. Blah, right. Blah, blah, blah. right. Or whatever. The stupid bag draw wasn't 44. It screwed people over. Right. Yeah. You should have an option to get out of it. And there was, I mean, the, to be fair, Mary, it's also part of the game. Can your social skills get you what you want? Mm-hmm. And I appreciate that. So I like that part of the journey. I thought the card thing in the episode one was dumb. Yeah. It didn't feel flushed out. This is simple. And it's like, can you, it's like, even it was very clear survivor knowledge. Mm-hmm. It was like where they didn't like, they didn't try to trick you. didn't tell you it was a puzzle or nothing. Right. Yeah. Well, before we even get to the puzzle, I think that this is an interesting moment that will probably come up later where Q is ready to have like a meat shield mm, alliance. Yeah. A brochacha's alliance. It ain't going to happen, but I like the idea. It's probably not going to happen, but it would be fun if it did. So Q base now here, Q says we we each just need one person that's all we need and hunter says are you are you tight with tiffany and you said yeah tiffany would be my number mm-hmm. one you know who is your number one hunter automatically says tevin which is true which is true same with q he's telling the truth giving up information and you think tim might be lying i don't know i think tim might be lying here i think tim might i based on what we've seen maria is not his number one Ben is his number one. Well, yeah, because we know for a fact Maria is not his. No, is not like she doesn't view him as a number one. Right. And but maybe could, he views her. That could be. That could be. But I'm just saying, like, at this point, do you want to give out who your number one is? Like to these guys you don't know and aren't going to be. you know, Yeah. And the way yet? the thing is, you don't know Q and Hunter. If you're Tim. Yes. You don't know them at all. Yeah. You haven't. All you've do is seen them at challenges for a few minutes every couple of days. Yeah. So. I mean, you could, I, we, do you throw out a name that could be your number one? Like, this is my option. Or do you. Better than saying nobody. I'll straight say, out lie. You say nobody, <laughs> that looks like a lie. Yes. So you have to say a name yes. because they don't know the dynamics of your yes. tribe. Exactly. Yeah. And you can't say like, oh, I'm really tight with 
Mo when you never talk to Mo yeah. or something well, like that. But I assume everybody talks to each other, but I get what sure, you mean. Sure, you know what I mean. Like when it's going to be obvious at the merge, like yeah. I never see you it's talking to It's a that rough spot to be in, but at the same time, you learn information about the other two. So it's kind of a fair trade for everybody. Mm-hmm. You know, and also this is not something, I don't know. It probably isn't going to pan out. Yeah, but they showed it because it's interesting. I will see if it actually matters. I, I agree with Q's basic point mm-hmm. of the strong and I they say this all the time and it never happens. Basically, I don't ever recall a strong personal alliance happening, which is unfortunate because they're all correct. If these strong people all um got together and went to the end. Sure. Like, yeah, you guys would dominate the immunity challenges mm-hmm. and on Big Brother. That's huge because. The challenges there literally control who can go on the block. Well, yeah. in Survivor, the reason this doesn't happen, unlike on Big Brother, that uh, much lesser show than Survivor, which you agree with? In our opinion, yes. Okay, so I'll make <laughs> yes. sure. Make sure it wasn't going crazy. Agree. Mary still hates Big Brother. She's seen three seasons. She hated, hated every episode. <laughs> Anyways, so uh, point being is that in that show, it's like if you're strong, you basically control the game. And this show, being strong actually kind of like hide that for the most yeah. part mm-hmm. unless you're going to win, win out on challenges right having other strong people around gets in the way of you winning all the challenges mm-hmm. and that's usually why it doesn't work on survivor but i agree with the basic concepts like but really like if you guys i don't know information's king it ain't mm-hmm. challenges it is yes so it's not yeah it's like i said i like the idea and i the more I think about it, i like the idea on big brother because that's where you actually control the game right yeah Ugh. well i again i think that i think it could work and I think it would get them farther in the game and that you always want to get farther because you never yeah. know what path or what might happen to get you to the end. So I think it's smart. And and they left in the line. Hunter says, you know, I lost my vote. But if this Brochacha Alliance works out, then that journey could have been worth a million dollars. So it could be important later. We we don't know. This journey, I about fell out of my chair when I saw the question. I was, oh, yeah. I was expecting something hard. You were so ready. It was hard. Well, I know. I, I'm aware that for... People who are not uh, crazed lunatics Fixated listen to podcasts on tiny about Survivor. Details. Yes, so, exactly. The minute details is what would have won me here. That would take me 10 seconds. The show would have had no time to hear me explain my thought process because <laughs> I was just gone. I'd be like, Borneo, Marquesas. And I saw the order. And the moment he put Guatemala down, I know they never showed a wide chop. I saw Guatemala in the wrong place. I was like, that's it. I was like, because everybody forgets about those like middle. I say middle. It was actually not even middle seasons anymore. Yeah. That area of like like guatemala to fiji always seems to get overlooked he's like parties on the season therefore goes here i'm like okay i mean all right cool he's it's now he knew as he said he knew things that happened in the seasons and he why he didn't but he didn't watch them chronologically so that would be me like i've seen most of them i probably see most of them in the order but I don't, I'm not going to remember exactly. And I'm order. so annoying. When he said South Pacific was season 22, I was like, no, it's 23. Like that mattered in the moment. Yes. <laughs> so I want to point out, Survivor could never do this challenge with their new logos because they've. Well, not for the new area. No, yeah, they've spoiled yeah. themselves. Huh? But I would love to see more journeys that are just Survivor. It's so much fun. Let's just do Survivor knowledge for journeys. That sounds great to me. I feel like it's because you're spending so little time on these journeys anyways. Like when we got the edited of Banu and Ben doing their little maze or not maze, but you mm-hmm. know what I'm talking about, the 3D puzzle they were working on. It's a total of like a minute or two. It's not like we're wanting some big epic challenge here like we no. get at the immunity challenge. I'd prefer so, no journeys, to be frank. Right. But if so we're going to do them, if we're gonna do them and it's only going to be a minute of the TV show anyways. Yeah. Why? Why make some complicated 3D puzzle thing that we can't figure out or understand. Oh, like Emily and Lou, like that they tried doing 45. Right. Yeah. Or most of them, most all of them fail. And yeah, still Hunter failed here, but it felt like it felt more attainable. It felt this is very doable, very relatable. It was doable. Yes. Yeah. I enjoyed it too, even if I couldn't name all of the seasons. Have we reached the Force Awakens of Survivor where we're now showing people who are way more popular from the history of Survivor to make you feel like you like the season more? Mm. Like, ooh, here's Han Solo. Everyone clap. I know him. I know. I, yes. <laughs> Mary, Mary's heard my red letter media repeated jokes. I clapped. I clapped. Yeah. I saw Boss Robin. I clapped. I clapped so hard. Tyson, I know him. I know Tyson. All right, you got me. Um, all right, but I want to point out they did not do they did not do Richard Hatch for Borneo, which makes sense because they didn't. They asked me a winners at war, and then they they said no actually because of Dan's incident in thirty nine. Um, that's a long rabbit trail. I've covered that in videos. 
point being is that I was like, dang, if they had mentioned Richard Hatch, that would work perfectly with our House of Villains thing from earlier. Mm-hmm. I was like, I could wait till now. No, nope. uh, that's unfortunate. So anyways, uh, yes, I clapped. I clapped when I saw people I knew showed up on my screen. I clapped. All right. So that was the journey. <laughs> it was a decent journey. I think that would be that should be an April Fool's podcast, baby. I see I got April Fool's in the brain because I made the April Fool's video. It's on Patreon. Uh, just like we should do, we should do a podcast like that, <laughs> like a ten minute joke podcast, just like they did for the Star Wars ones I showed you, Red Letter Media. Uh huh. The Star Wars ones for a letter, Red Letter Media were hilarious. But then you'd have to show your face on camera, and we know how much Liz will hate that. So that's true. I can't afford it because I'm not rich like Liz. Crap! If only Liz could pay us, then I can make a, a parody podcast. I clapped. I clapped. All right. <coughs> so, anyways. Q leads Alliance Talks. We just mentioned that. 100, okay, we talked about that. I, I put easy survivor quiz ever, ever. All right, so Hunter has lost his vote, which will might be important comes the mergatory because I think everyone else will have theirs. Ben, does Ben have his vote back now? He lost it for one tribal. He loses it for one tribal. So, so I think he has it back. back. So Hunter's the only one missing a vote come mergatory. But as you saw with Austin in 45, you can cover it up pretty easily in the mergatory. Mm-hmm. If we're, most of us are in agreement on who's going, as long as it's not a split vote. Yeah. Split vote's one of those matters. Yeah. I so, don't think Hunter will be a first mo- merge. Oh. But you we'll would see. be surprised. I also thought that gem was on track to win. You're right. So t- just tonight, uh, with the way things are going. All right. So, anyways, we go back to Siga. No, first we go back to Yanu. And we see them eat their pastries. I took no comments on this because I was because over was so Yanu. Basic. I'm so yeah. over Yanu. I mean, it was, yeah, they ate the reward. Yay. Good Here's job, Yanu. Survivor wants you emotionally invested in Yanu. Mm-hmm. We watched Amazing Race last weekend. I will yes. tr- promise this is a short tangent. And I think we mentioned this last season too, because they've done this for a few seasons now. Amazing Race does not do sob stories or emotional backstories. They just give you backstory. Mm-hmm. That's it. You just know who these people are, where they come from, and how they know each other. Yeah. There's good knowledge. I don't mm-hmm. need emotional, manipulative backstories. So I wish Survivor would do that. I say this because... I'm over being emotionally manipulated survivor. I don't need care about Yanu eating the flipping food. <laughs> I do. I'd rather have got Nami content here, but it makes me wonder if that just means that Yanu, that's the thing, like is the winner on Yanu? That's the question. Possible. Is the winner on Yanu? And he, that's why no matter what, we have to cut to Yanu all the time. Even when we cut back over to Siga, one of the first things we hear has been saying, you know, I'm really sorry we lost, but I'm glad that Yanu got a chance to like have keep their sanity and we're like ben that's such a good you person. have to vote somebody out ben you know ben's just yes, a good dude though. i do i is. liked him i still like him i don't under know why pressure, past tense a queen reference there for ben under pressure ben is still ben a gentleman he's still yeah, nice yeah, yeah he is still nice yeah. ben's still cool dude i agree he's just a cool dude and mm-hmm. he was feeling happy for another team even though it was at the expense of his team sure and he could have right. gone tonight but he didn't, mm-hmm. you know. So anyways, uh, just it just says things about Ben. So, yeah. All right. Okay. So Jem wants to go idol hunting and she like strips tells everyone, I want to go idol hunting, but like not together. Oh, mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, I will say this okay. was interesting. This was interesting. I was yeah. going to say, I, I feel like when mm-hmm. Tiffany found hers, it was simple. It was just the key. Was it not just the key? I've, uh, that's what I remember. I don't remember her doing any task. I remember I, us talking about this. Yeah, I don't. I don't. So this was strange to me. I mean, I'm I'm glad. Correct I guess. me if I'm wrong in the comments. Yeah. Correct us. Because I, I recall, I was like, oh, yeah, they kept it simple this season because they were planning on 60 minute episodes. Mm-hmm. Well, what the heck was this? Yeah. Did they adjust? And to be fair, it wasn't like that difficult. No, but it, it was, was a task. It was a task you had to do. You know, how to do it without anyone seeing her, which would have been hard if people weren't out idol hunting, probably. That tree mill was perfectly measured to that machete. Like, they planned ahead on this. This wasn't come up. They didn't come up the last minute. Yeah. No, this wasn't last that minute. That machete was literally the perfect length for that tree mill. So that was interesting. This I mean, was thought I, of ahead of time. I liked it. And I'm glad that, I'm glad that Jim got it. I wasn't it, even sure if her math was correct until she dug it up. I was like, oh, this whole time people, has it been there the whole time, by the way? Has the idol always been there and people have been no, walking over no, it? No, 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 no. Well, sure, but the key to unlock the box, it tell, tells her how to, like, that was all stuff she got after. So the idol could have been there the whole time. People have just been walking on it for 11 days. I also, guess so, but I think that, I feel like that's really dangerous. I don't know. I mean, that's part of the game. I think it's the fun part of the game is the fact that it was there the whole time. I hope it was. Another fun thing, to add 
this couldn't be this would have been a really ballsy move that idol like what part is the idol is it the string is it the beads do you need the string and the beads because i joked with mary during the episode and i was like what if she wore the idol around her neck is it like i don't know if the string that's why i said is the string yeah, important the idols are what if not i move the beads impressive. to my own string is it still the idol i like, think it's just the beads if in the, the note order. doesn't say it then it's kind of fair game, kind of like the box. You just take the box. You mm-hmm. don't read the scroll. You smash it. Don't get me wrong. When Hunter found it, I was like, come on. Nope. Still didn't happen. No. All right. Well, so anyways, Jem, I'm like, what if she wore the idol around her neck like a necklace? Oh, because you already had the necklace on with the beads. That's why I was. That's the only reason I said this. And I said the girls would recognize right away. It wasn't her. It wasn't necklace. the same one. Yeah. <sighs> I mean, when all you have to do every day is stare at the people around you and they're wearing the exact same things. I think what if you're like I'm gonna make notice. a new bead necklace people and notice. you sit there right in front of everybody, pretend like you have taken apart your idol, your fake idol, your real idol, you take you have it all taken apart, all deconstructed, and you construct it in front of everybody, making a new one and Where'd put you that get around the beads? your neck. Can you stop asking these questions, Mary, <laughs> and let me go down my rabbit hole okay. of craziness? But th- I don't know. Just imagine how awesome that would be if like the rest of the like, oh my gosh, can you imagine how cool that'd be if you just wore your idol around the neck? And then you get the reveal when you play it. Now, this is under the assumption Gem didn't get voted off tonight. It's a big assumption because yeah. that's not what happened. Just one point that if anyone goes in Survivor, that would be a real. That's like a. That's like a. That's a move people would ball. That's a baller move. I disagree. If you can put that that idol around your neck and nobody knows. Well, sure. That's the hidden immunity idol, and you're just wearing it. Yes. That, and then you get to, one time you get to play it, and it has to block votes. I think that's the clinch, the the linchpin to the whole thing. Has to do you good. I'm not saying that's not that a baller a move. Baller move. I'm saying that people are gonna be like, "Where'd you get the beat?" It is so dumb. It is so risky. But if it works, kind of like JT giving Russell the idol in Heroes vs. Villains, it's so, so dumb. dumb. No, but it's if it had so worked, dumb. no. But if it had worked, it would have been crazy. So dumb. You don't. Okay, we won't have that. I'm aware of how again. dumb it is. Making how decisions is. based on zero information is This is dumb. why I am first boot final three goat material. <laughs> <laughs> I would do this. <laughs> anyway, so as soon as she gets the idol, she says in her confessional that there there is no way that Tim or Ben or one of them is not going home tonight. Facts. So facts. So that was when I facts. thought she might be going home. You crazy yeah. pants. At that point, I thought she was right. I know. <laughs> I thought Jim. I thought Jim was breaking out this episode. I'm like, she got the idol. <laughs> oh, she, nope, had the she was on a confident high. She got the idol. So was I. I was she feeling the confident her high. Alliance and she shouldn't have. I was empathizing and sympathizing and all the thizings. You were all with the her thizings. confident high. I was feeling it. I was feeling the gem hype after the V for victory got me going in the beginning. So it seems like after she got her idol, this is when she goes on her aggressive attack of interrogating both Ben and Tim. Who are you going to vote for? This was the first crack for me in the episode for her. For her. Yeah, this was very aggressive. And (laughs) I mean, I didn't think it was great for Ben either because Jem is at least trying to talk strategy. And it's it's like she's trying to like reel in a little puppy like, okay, stay focused. Stay Mm -hmm. focused. We're talking about we're talking about strategy. Come back over here. You want to talk about look at me. Look me right in the eyes. So, I, you know, like Ben isn't really wanting to talk strategy still with her. He's still like jumping around, hitting things with his hammer. So he's just kind of like still goofing off, which isn't great. You know, you want to talk strategy <laughs> with people. Not the best move. Not the best move. Um, but yeah, Jim just like demanding the guys look at her in the eyes and and tell them who they're going to vote for. It's just like, ugh, it makes you like feel. You do, that's something you do to somebody when they're in trouble. Yeah. Like, hey, look me in the eyes. Okay, child. Yeah. yeah. Look You're me a child. In the eyes. Stop gonna... saying I don't know. Stop <laughs> saying oh. Stop saying these things to get out of the conference. No, answer the question. Look me in the eye. Yeah. yeah. It's like something you do when you're like trying to interrogate somebody. Right. And I I did like in this little segment here, Mariah comes up to Charlie and just says, I'm so sorry. I know you're really gonna struggle with writing down Ben's name tonight. And that was like a really good emotional moment for Mo. Like you need to recognize things like that and and connect with people. So she was doing a good job on her end. I mean, little does she know he wasn't going to write her down. Mm-hmm. But I don't think Charlie knew he wasn't going to write Ben's name down yet either. Um, and then we finally get, you know, Maria and Charlie talking about who are we going to vote? 
And again, it ends with Marie saying, no, I don't think I, I don't trust Ben. I think Jem will be loyal. So once again, cue Jem going home. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, again, I've already talked to this at the beginning of the episode. I think it was a good move to keep Ben and to get rid of Jim at this point. Um, and hopefully that doesn't cause issues for Maria and Charlie later on. But that was pretty much all to see until that's all the notes I had until tribal council. Well, let's go to tribal then. Here it happens. The surprise of the episode. Jem's going to go. Oh, I thought you were going to say Ben made another music comment. I did mention earlier. the Aussie <laughs> Oh, you already said thing, that. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> you just pop culture you yeah. know, references. Yep. Yeah. I was really right. I just, I honestly, the whole time I was kind of zoning out during the tribal council thing about how cool it would be for necklaces to replace mm-hmm. the idol. I was really right. And I was like, this would be so cool. So anyways, Charlie Maria worry about Jem. Tribe clarifies at tribal council that they do not aqua dump together, which I thought was really funny considering my upcoming April Fool's video that is on yeah. Patreon right now. Yeah. I say this because I w- did not realize how important the aqua dump would be in tonight's episode. It is also important. It's a crucial part of figuring Vile. out when the, next, when the next returning season will be. All right. <coughs> so Jem asks if she can vote Jeff off. Mm-hmm. And um, funny story, season one, episode two, I believe it was the Pagong tribe who tried to vote Jeff off and they cut it out of the show because they wanted the show to be taken seriously and the Pagong was not taking it seriously. Yeah. But I wonder, can you write Jeff's name down, put it in the bucket and then they tell you to go back up, go back and vote. Why child. would you do that? I don't know. Why would you waste time and paper and energy? I mean, <laughs> what else you got going on? Yeah. Anyways, a a asked, game? Well, a she lot. asked Jeff if she can vote him off. What's the difference? Yeah. Okay. So this is strike three against Jim in my opinion. Because this is dumb? Well, not, not just Oh, can I write your name down, Jeff? It was my, I don't know who to write down, Jeff. I don't know. I have nothing. Did she giggle because she's lying? No, she didn't oh, giggle. Okay. That I remember that yeah. was shown. Um, It's just like, and, and I'm not saying that you can't say that at Tribal, especially if you don't know, but it was just very, it was clearly, especially when Maria says, Jeff, if somebody's saying they don't know who to vote for, they're just lying. Because we all know who we're going to vote for. And it's not going to make some people happy. And that's the truth. You know, like, Maria's being honest. If cryptic, she's not going to say who she's, you know, voting for. Yeah. Maria's just lying for the sake of lying at this point. Like, I don't think anyone really believes that you don't know who you're going to vote for. You're saying for. Jem's lying for the sake of lying? Jem, sorry. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I gotcha. So, I, that was just another point, especially since Maria contradicted her. Now, if Maria was going to vote with her, I don't think she would have contradicted her at this I think point. what this does, wrong. with Jem going here and all that that you said, I think we've learned is that, as we kind of suspected earlier, Maria and Charlie are important. But mm-hmm. Charlie's Angels is a load of garbage. Yes. And therefore, Mariah has now moved down. Yes. And in fact, I wonder if this will affect Mariah's decisions come mergatory, which is next week. In terms of she thought she was good with these people. Mm-hmm. And sure, I believe she was one of the people who voted for Jem. Mm-hmm. But who is her alliance? Ain't Tim and Ben. Oh, no, she didn't vote for Jem. She didn't? I gotta look again. No, oh, she voted one. for Ben. Oh, did you look this up already? It was in the end of the episode oh, when was it? showing I, the votes. I, I was, <laughs> and also she looked like super disappointed when Jem went home and was like shaking her head. Yeah, that's true. And looked shocked. Somebody else voted with her. That's my point. Is like you've alienated. That's a negative on Maria and Charlie. You've alienated Mariah. But you have chosen Tim gonna, and Ben, so Tim and Ben, I guess, are on your side. Right. You were going to alienate somebody. You were going to alienate Tim well, and Ben. Well, I thought it wasn't going to be Charlie's Angels. I thought she was going to alienate, alienate Tim or Ben. Right. So you're either going to alienate Tim and Ben or you're going to alienate Mo and yeah. Jem. Well, Minus one. Well, well, it's an update on the wiki yet, but you're, pro- you're probably right because there's two votes for Ben. and Yeah. Who else was it? So Yeah. All right. Jem's voted off four to two. So much. That was a wild hour and a half for me. From well, from the whenever the V for Victory showed up and I first noticed it to that, that was a wild time about yeah, an hour, 20 minutes. Crazy. So, all right, next week's the mergatory. Next mm-hmm. week, it's happening as per usual. Everyone knows day 12, that's the mergatory. So, it's really funny when you go back and watch old seasons and day 12 is just another Dan Survivor. Yeah. <laughs> so, all right, you got anything else for the episode? No, that was it. All right, what's new on Patreon, folks? Here we go. As usual, these podcasts are ad-free on there. Link in the description. Uh, it's also free to get those podcasts. Uh, I have a few videos I just uploaded on there. When is the next Survivor Attorney season? I kind of joked about today. 
uh, Matt Elrod's story video from Redemption Island, the worst survivor reunion moments that's on there. And Boston Rob is getting not only his heroes versus villains videos already on there, but not only is there his Redemption Island video coming up here soon on Patreon, but also what other see Island of the Idols, Winners of War, and Deal or No Deal Island. I decided screw it. I'm finishing the Rob Father series. My finishing, I mean, until of course he goes on something like the Traders and makes a part <laughs> ten. But seriously, Rob Father parts of five through nine will all be on Patreon here soon. So if you're a Boss Rob fan, this is the time to join for sure. If you're not already on there, okay. Well, thank you all for that. Uh, we appreciate because we don't. If you if you have noticed, we don't have sponsors on these podcasts, and that is a deliberate choice. We have an option to have sponsors. We've chosen not to do it because we don't want basically to be told what to say. But really, I don't like most of the stuff that they're trying to push on you guys. And I watch other YouTube videos and I see the stuff they're pushing and I'm like, hmm. So anyways, that's really it. Patreon, if you want to support the channel, I greatly appreciate it. Uh, Though if Liz is our one exception, if she offers to pay money to sponsor (laughs) the podcast, we will accept. Am I I joking? I don't know. I'll have to talk to Liz about it. (laughs) All right, let's move on. Question of the week. Now, Mary, Rebecca and I have been nailing each other every week on this. Like, I don't, I, there, maybe there's been one correct, like we keep getting hard questions on each other. She asked me, I believe a week or two ago, the question of who's been voted off the most. And I was like, oh, it's Ozzy. Remember, I remember you asked me last season that question mm-hmm. and I knew, I already knew the answer, but I was like, not only did I already know it, but Mary had already asked it. So we right. were getting the territory of repeating a question, but no, we've been going hard. So hopefully this week, you're going to pick up where Rebecca left off and Rebecca's going to come back next week and pick up where you left off, I guess. Do you have a hard question? What's your hard question? I hope this week? I have a hard question. All right. We'll see if other people know it too. Okay. So my trivia question is in what season were the last three challenges the exact same as the last three challenges of millennials versus Gen X? Okay. Can I get a hint on this? I have a question on the hint. You have a question? No, on I have a question hint? on what kind of hint. It, is this did this season take place after millennials millennials rejects or before that's my question after after okay so that's what i was wondering if it copied millennials or if millennials copied it okay so it copied millennials versus gen x it's after huh uh okay so i know one of the um, i think it was the last immunity challenge of millennials millennials versus gen x is when they're stacking those little bowls with like their rod thing. And I'm trying to think what seasons did that. Cause I know that's one of those last three. Oh, uh, it wasn't heroes versus sealers versus hustlers because that was when Ben had his upside down. You it wasn't Dave versus Goliath because Dave versus Goliath had Nick with one arm behind his back when that last mini challenge. And I remember being super excited cause I was rooting for the underdog that season. David's obviously ghost Island. I legitimately do not remember, which sucks. Game changers. I don't believe that was one of the last ones. Was it Edge of Extinction? I don't think. Shoot, if it's Island of Isles, I'm not going to remember. I try to forget that season. Oh, I am going to take a shot in the dark here. <laughs> I'm going to guess it's not a new era season. I'm going to go with. Oh, Island of the Idols. Nope. I'll give you another hint and let you have another guess. Ugh, I don't want any more hints. Just tell me. Oh, I'm wrong. I got it wrong. It was 43. Oh, it was a new, was era, a new era. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. Uh-huh. Did you know uh-huh. Sammy's only 19? Yes. That's not your trivia question. I just want to remind you. So oh, you brought man. 43. All right. The question I have for you is which new era season is the first to have multiple hidden immunity idols not be played and just they just expired. Your options are obviously every new era season besides 46. <laughs> You picked an easy one, and I don't know it. It's is not easy. I actually oh. didn't know the answer. That's why okay. I picked it. It sounds easy. It sounds like I should know. Well, you have where there's multiple idols. You have that a just one expire. out of five op- a chance of getting it right. That just expire. Yeah, they have multiple idols. They were acquired. They just never got played. They just expired. Forty three. Ooh, close. Forty two. Oh, okay. <laughs> that would be funny though kidding. if we had that same one. Yeah. <laughs> All right, well, let's move on to TV ratings now, Mary. I'm going to catch you up because I've been doing this with Rebecca every week. So let me catch you up to where we're at. Okay. The premiere had 4.9 million. By the way, uh, the numbers are on screen, but you can always go to, t- I think it's tvseriesfinale.com if you want to look at it yourself. For those wondering, but it's on screen. I screenshotted the ratings. Anyway, so episode one, 4.9 million. It was a good start. I believe it was a better start than 
44. That's the season we could have been comparing to because it's in the same time of year as the fall, or sorry, the springtime. Uh, episode two, big dip down to 4.43. Um, I suspected, Mary, that episode two was such a massive dip because it was a two hour episode and you and yeah. I were both like, holy cow, when is this thing going to be done? Mm -hmm. So we figured, Rebecca and I figured people might have just tuned out that week. Like, it's like, okay. <laughs> Episode three bounced back up to 4.78, which was good when it was 90 minutes. And last week it dropped down to 4.68. And I'm wondering if it dropped a little bit because Banu. People yeah. are over, there's so much <laughs> over so Banu. People are over Banu and how much focus he got. And by the way, I'm going to point out Jeff on his podcast doubled down and said, oh, I'd cast Banu again. Okay. <laughs> I'm married. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Would you cast, cast him again? Banu? No. Would you cast him? No, yeah, no, I wouldn't either. I think Bonnie needs to be on a different show, not Survivor. Okay, so episode four, 4.68. So that's the actually, it's not the worst because episode two is the worst, which made sense. I called it a long time ago. I'm like, that's going to be too long. But 4.68. So I don't have 44's number just to directly compare it at the moment. But I will say that Survivor had the best ratings in the 18 to 49 demo, which is the main demographic for advertisements. It's who they're usually targeting mm -hmm. for most advertisements. So I had the highest ratings. It wasn't close. However, in terms of viewership, it lost to all three Chicago shows hmm. because, and I know some of our people listen, I'm not dissing on the Chicago shows. They have figured out a format and they're nailing it because they get a ton of viewers. They, all three of their shows had the most viewers that night on Wednesday night last week, but their 1849 demo was much lower because it's mostly older people watching. Yeah. People above 49. Makes sense. Yeah. So, I mean, hey, good on Chicago. Good also an FBI. Another one where they have like three shows going at once that I think they all connect. I don't know. It's one of those things that sound interesting to me, interesting to me on paper. It's like, oh, you got three shows and they all kind of connect. They're all on the same night. Like, it's, I don't know. Maybe it's still super formulaic and just sounds cool. I don't know. I've never, yeah. never really been big into cop shows and firefighter shows and hospital shows. The, like, the seal feels like there's so many of them. Yeah. They are. There are quite a few. It's like a comfort show for a lot of people. Though. Yeah, yeah. And that's why I'm not. That's why I said I'm not dissing on. It. I'm sure they're actually like really good. They've been going on forever, so they got something figured out. It's just that Survivor crushed the demo, the advertising demo, but it did lose in in the views yes. to Chicago. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, any thoughts on that? I know it's usually just used listening to me spouting nonsense. No. Again, I the mean, minute details. It's cool. It's not. It's still going. It's still yeah. pretty strong. Nope. Survivor has already renewed their contract with Fiji through season 50. So we know they're good for the next three to four seasons. All right. Let's move on to winter analysis. Now, as I mentioned earlier in the podcast, tomorrow, Rebecca and I will be ranking, I believe, all 13 people remaining. I believe it's 13. I could yes. be wrong. How many people are remaining? That's what Rebecca and I are ranking tomorrow on the podcast. But today, Mary and I are just going to do our top three. Starting with our number three and Mary, go ahead and say your number three and I'll say my number three. You ready? On three. Okay. One, two, three. Charlie. Charlie. Okay. You talked me into it during the episode. I legitimately didn't have my number three, but the more I thought about it, the more we talked about it, I'm convinced that he should be strongly considered. So mm -hmm. go ahead. Why are you high on Charlie? So for a couple of reasons um, we talked about tonight, we usually check in with him about silly things, about dancing and about battles, vocal battles or whatever. Um, he's super likable. Everyone wants to work with him. You know, the guys want to work with him. The girls want to work with him. He has a really tight alliance with Maria that I really don't think anyone suspects at this moment. They're keeping it under wraps. Mm -hmm. So, you know, smart on him. He's in a great position in his tribe. I think he's going to slip under the radar for a while after the merge because he's not going to be perceived as a physical threat. No, we got bigger. We bigger literally fish. have three bigger guys. Yes. We were shown. Um, so I just, I don't know, I have a good feeling about Charlie. His edit has been pretty good so far. It's all positive content. He got that uh, flashback thing with Maria. I mean, yeah. sorry, to flashback to Denise and Malcolm. Mm -hmm. Denise and Malcolm. He had the Denise and Malcolm flashback. Um, he hasn't really had any other, what I would say, red herrings or hints necessarily. But they've been throwing so many red herrings this season. Maybe the winner doesn't have any. Yes. And, and then that could be it. I mean, he had one... In episode one, there was like five or six people that had what we call emotional backstories right in the beginning of the episode. And he was one of them. With pictures for with him? With pictures and everything. Huh, okay. um, yeah, with pictures of him doing his like objection, your honor. And oh, stuff like that. gosh. From yeah. the audition tape. From his audition tape. Ugh. So there's a couple of those. Sorry, so I didn't really care for the audition I don't know stuff. if you would necessarily, those are all kind of newer. So 
However you want to. I don't count audition tapes. I'm talking for me. That's not emotional backstory. Emotional backstory. Did they show anything else other than him doing the objection from his audition tape? Yes. I'm pretty oh, sure. Okay. I'm pretty All right, sure. Well, maybe. Could be wrong. But anyways, positive content, smart player, in a good position. Yeah. Charlie, I agree. I've moved him up. I wasn't really salt. Hunter was my number three previously, but as I said before, I didn't realize there's no one else. I, I, mm-hmm. My top two are my top two. Yeah. Jem almost slid into number three this week. So, you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's Things how, happen. That's how up in the air I am about number three. I am not locked in. Mm-hmm. So number three for me is also Charlie for the, all the reasons you said. He's in the he's in the power part. He's in the power lines of Sega, meaning him or Maria. And he got his way tonight, mm-hmm. which was important. Yes. Uh, so we'll see. Come to the merge. Can he him and Maria fly under the radar? I could totally see it enough to get far, far enough before they have to really unleash. Yes. Because there's going to be mass chaos here in the beginning. Mm-hmm. You know, the Nami has yet to do a tribal and that usually is disaster mm-hmm. for a tribe. The tribes like that usually don't go into emerge and do well i believe the last time a tribe was flawless and then entered the merge and somebody won from the tribe was 41 Mm -hmm. with erica and i think that was the last time i'm trying to remember reba didn't come in flawless uh jam jam's tribe did not come in flawless gabler's tribe did not come in flawless and marian uh marianne's tribe did not come in flawless so no erica's tribe is the only one that went in didn't lose anything in the pre-merge and erica is not our typical winner Right. That's not like, yeah, that was, they literally were were hiding her from us. People are annoyed about. All right. So Charlie's number three. Who is your number two? We are different on this one. My number two is Tiffany. Oh, you changed in between (laughs) when I asked before the (laughs) podcast and now. All right. My number two is also Tiffany. So we agree on our top three. Let's just name them. Charlie, Tiffany, and Tevin. Tevin. And and I will say. Charlie, three, two, Tiffany, one, Tevin. Yes. I will say. Copycat. Did did change this meta episode. I didn't know Tiffany was your number two. You changed it. You changed it as we recorded the yes, podcast. I did. Just like I changed Charlie. <laughs> exactly. Wow. This is I'm still like I still feel really good about Hunter. Hunter was my has been my number two in my in your Thursday wins or sorry. In our winner analysis podcast that we've been doing, Hunter's been my number two this whole time. And he could possibly hop back up there. It just to me it's curious that we keep jumping back to Yano. We keep checking in with him. Even though we, it's not ne- maybe necessarily. And I get the emotional connection that, you know, oh, they've been losing this whole time. We need to see how they're doing now that they've won. Tiffany's too flippin' important. But I do think Tiffany is very important to the story. And she's going to be more important than Hunter. They don't montage a loser thing for Tiffany like right. they did to Kenzie tonight. She's going to be, she's going to make it to the merge. She's going to be overlooked at first. And I think that she's smart. She can make friends easily. And we we've seen her just give her heart and challenges. She's going to, you know, be a, be a good in challenges as well. So I don't know. I just, I feel like she's important. And so I moved her up. But also too. we have winter hints on her. So for example, in the opening theme song, yes. uh, not V for victory, but they have, it's like in 45, uh, they showed the P, the final three of believe plus one other person in 45. This season, they showed Venus, Hunter, Tiffany, and Tevin, which could be our final three plus one other person. Mm-hmm. And she is one of those. She's one of those four. Right. And hey, I mean, talk about a random Yanu to throw into this midst of Nami. Yes. Because that has three Nami mm-hmm. and a Yanu. Yeah. Well, that, well, kind of a random combination, don't you think? It is random. It's random. What do you consider? Why? Why are there? It's not even like an even split. They didn't do like one Sega, one Yanu, right. and one not no Sega, mm-hmm. none at all. Mm-hmm. So Sega got important content tonight, and we'll see how that goes moving forward. That's why that's the only thing that's holding me back on Charlie, not moving him up even further is because like Sega, like aside from tonight, we've been joking on Sega for like four episodes now about how unimportant they seem, right? How they literally would rather show something from four days prior, which by the way, Mary, I want to point out that that four days prior, they spent time on that gem still went home. So it literally did yes. not matter. Mm-hmm. That's how unimportant Sega has been. And that's why it makes me not want to put Charlie in higher than three. Right. So as Tiffany is on an important tribe is important and even has some legitimately important winner moments now Mm -hmm. she hasn't had a sob story yet right yeah i know you have the tracker on that no she does not okay so she still has time and undoubtedly she'll get one the emotional Mm -hmm. backstory that is important you have to have one to win right again unless you don't count episode one which i don't remember i just wrote down like Uh, all of them as they have no i doesn't i don't count that very very could have been hers could have been more of her just uh, application video in my opinion an emotional backstory means you get it and it's only about you you're not in the midst of other people right 
Makes sense. Getting one as well. Mm -hmm. And I know this is all personal rules. It's just based on what I've seen so far. No, she has not yet. Based on those definitions. Yeah. Okay. Well, our number one is Tevin. So, Mary, why do you have Tevin at number one? Well, I don't I don't know if he's going to stay there much longer. I need the confessional camera from time. I think he got one. He got and that one. is bad. I know he got one. But yeah, he got skunked. It is not great for a winner. We keep saying this like he's so good at making people like him and talk to him and want to work with him. And that's so important. He's not going to be a physical threat come to merge. He's not going to be attacked as maybe even a strategic threat because he's just the like he's just heaven. He's just fun here to hang out and chill and have fun with you. So, you know, like, and if is he the fan favorite that goes out before final tribal? That's how I keep feeling. Yeah. And that could be because he's the the problem with him right now is he's getting so little content. It feels like he's not going to be important. And they've only left him positive content. They've cut, as we've mentioned, his negative three or four negative scenes and the Mm -hmm. secret scenes from him. And I don't know this week's checks. They haven't uploaded him yet for episode five, but. There was none for episode four. To be fair, they only had two last week for episode four, which is a bit strange. Usually have three. Mm-hmm. But every time they've had a Nami secret scene, it's been a negative thing about Tevin. Right. So you could kind of go either way with this. It's like he's getting content cut, but it is negative content. And I don't know. I just feel like overall he has the best chance as an actual player because we've seen so many things that he like, like you can't ignore how he's running his tribe without anyone really thinking about him surrounding his drive. You can't ignore the fact that he is ready to get out strategic threats like Soda, even though that's a really close alliance member of him. Um, He's had an emotional backstory in episode four. We've got that with his dad and the fishing. Mm -hmm. Um, His face is one of the- And his did not feel rushed, unlike Maria, which we mentioned. His face is one of the four faces we see in the theme song right at the very beginning. Um, So he has a lot of of hints. And again, those could be all red herrings, but- Still a strong contender. I can't ignore. And you can't ignore the fact that 45 he, seasons of evidence of right. how this works. I just feel like if he got to that final jury, he could so talk his way. Yes. To anybody voting for him. But also we have 45 seasons of 45 seasons of evidence of fan favorites who go out right for final tribal. Yep. It's true. Ever since season one with Rudy, it happens. Hey, person we're supposed to root for person that they the show. Now, the show is not always right on who the fan favorite should be. Sometimes they steal the cards they get dealt, you know, right. they're just like, all right, well, this is who goes out right for him. We'll make him a fan favorite, you know, because um, if they want to make Tevin look like a villain, they could have done it with what we've seen mm-hmm. in secret scenes. Yeah. If they wanted to, they could have done it, but they've chosen not to. It was a choice. So Tevin's number one. Uh, I I just I'm not. I, Nami got skunked tonight. If it was for Hunter finding a. Beware of Angel. There was almost no Nami content. Yeah. However, as we've talked about, Sega has been getting dunked on for four episodes in terms of their type of content in the beginning. They get one episode where they actually go to tribal, so they had to get the content they got. And then Yanu consistently. So maybe the winner's on Yanu. That's the thing. We, we've we been saying this whole time. Nami or Yanu, has, one of them has the winner. Mm-hmm. But we're over here like, but Charlie and Maria individually are so good. They're just on the wrong tribe in right. terms of the, how the show is portrayed. But well, again, maybe the show is going so hard because people like us have been dogging on the editing you know for seasons now saying how flipping obvious the winners have been outside of gabler which is you know our fall by the way for overlooking gabler the show did present a winner at it we're just dumb <laughs> sorry i'm here to give me a look i'm just dumb <laughs> is that better sure all right <laughs> but outside of gabler like we erica marianne so, jam jam so you're saying it's i mean fault. we figured them all out some of them earlier than ours, but they all got figured out. We figured them out. So anyways, I'm hoping, as I said, as always, I'm hoping for a Gabler surprise. I love a Gabler surprise. I love laughing. I just feel like I'm more on my toes than I've ever been. Gabler, I completely have blown him off. <laughs> anyway, so Tevin's number one. So but Liz is going to win. I am. Yeah. If Liz wins, I think everyone who listens to this podcast would fall out of the chair with laughter. <laughs> Wouldn't that not be the funniest thing Liz goes to the end and she wins a million dollars. <laughs> and then at the reunion reveals that she already has fat sex cash. And everyone's like, yes, this is not a surprise. You've already told us. She's like, oh, I forgot. And Jeff's like, Liz, remember you paid me to put you on the strong tribe. So you wouldn't go to tribal. And Liz's like, oh, duh. See, I forgot about all that money you gave you because I have so much. I didn't even notice it was gone. All right, Mary, ready for people's questions for us? Yep, yep. Every week after the episode is done on our community tab here on YouTube, I ask for y'all's questions. And as usual this season, we have several of them. All right, Mary. First question is, 
from Victoria. She asks, or she says, wow, I did not see that boot coming, but it makes so much sense in retrospect. Watching Hunter fail that trivia puzzle was one of the most painful things to me. It was so easy. <laughs> and now that's not a question, but here's the real doozy. You ready? Okay. Oh, and hi, Mary. I miss you on the recap podcast. Oh, hello. Who are y'all looking forward to seeing working together now that the merge Atori is here? Who are we looking forward to seeing interact together? Hmm. I'm looking forward to see if Tevin really is as good as we keep saying he is and if he can win everybody. Because he hasn't been tested yet. Yes. Yeah. We'll see how, how far Hunter and Tevin go because they have also given them some fun things too. Mm-hmm. Like the Andy Griffith Alliance and also yes. Hunter. I mean, and that's not some fake thing like Charlie's Angels. Like they really are number one and two together. Right. Like everything we've seen is these. And Hunter even says Tevin's not number one. So unless they're going to surprise us. All right. Next question is from Cybers. It's amazing how much secret content we get now that Bonnie was there to cry for 90 minutes. <laughs> Thoughts, Mary? Well, it did help that Sega actually went to tribal tonight. So that's important. Um, but yes, I, w- I was a little bit annoyed that we still had Banu content this episode, even if it was the I know, previously on. I know. I know. All right. Next question is from Weldon. Uh, do you think Liz's fat sacks of cash kept her from looking for the idol? Yes. <laughs> they just weighed down her pocket. It did. That's why she couldn't get up and look. She's used to paying other people to do things for her. Like, do you think Liz has ever checked her own mailbox? No, she pays somebody to do that for her. She mm. can't walk down her long driveway to check that. That's what other people do for her. Yeah. All right. Let alone go look for an idol, you silly people. All right. Next question is from Ryan. So much Yantu. So much Yanu. I, no, I read that wrong. So much Yanu content this week, even after the win. Is the winner on Yanu or is Sika going to get demolished at the merge? I feel like that those aren't two, two different questions. Is the winner on Yanu? I think it's the base question. Mm, it, it's possible. It's a strong possibility. <laughs> and we think if it is, it's it, between Mary and I, it's Tiffany. But yeah, Rebecca comes in with these wild card views, in my opinion, on winners. So we'll see what Rebecca says tomorrow. All right. Next question is from Vex. Does Liz, <laughs> of course, I picked another one about Liz. Does Liz have so much money? Her cash is weighing her down. It's the same question. It doesn't count. All right. Chelsea asks, do you think Jem letting her alliance in on her idol would have helped her tip the vote? In her favor tonight. Mm. Had she let them know, would they have kept her around? You know, that's a good, that is a good thought. I'm typically on the viewpoint of you never tell anyone that you have never. an idol. Um, but at the same time. It was Jem's fault for not knowing she was a target tonight. Yeah. At the same time, I think that's fair because if you do tell, you know, if she had said that, would Charlie and Maria have been like, well, crap, we can't get her out. So they might have just gone for yeah. Mariah instead. But, you know. And that that is a good point. It, it's possible it could have helped her. Comet asked, "How much were you shouting at the TV when Hunter's trying to arrange the logos?" Uh, Comet, I was like so excited by the fact this was even happening. I was like, "Put me in, uh, put me in, coach." <laughs> two times in Survivor history, I thought, "Put me in, coach." This time, and in Micronesia, when they had, and I believe, it was a reward challenge, and they were answering Survivor trivia questions. Like, yes, I was ready. I was like, "Please, Hunter, I would have guided you." As I said, the show wouldn't even have time to show me talking through my thoughts because my thoughts would have been done in 10 seconds. I'd have been boom, 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 boom. And then I would have had to do a confessional later to explain what I was thinking because there was no time in the moment. Like a Christian Ubicky. I got to point out though. Yes, like Christian Ubicky. I got to point out though, when Hunter was doing that, I was noticing because I was so, I was like, come on, Hunter, just get together. Just put down the right answer. I was looking at the background. It's a very beautiful view behind Hunter. Mm -hmm. Uh, I also think this is the beach though. They use this beach a lot. They used it in the beginning of 42 for the first challenge. They use it. I'm sure they use it all the time. These, these beaches get reused so much. I start noticing, oh, this is the same beach from blah, blah, blah. I think it's been used also as like the final five island. Ooh, so mm. spooky yeah. at the end of season. So, all right. Uh, Mason asks, and this is our several question. Okay. Hunter lost his vote twice. How does that work? I think Hunter can't vote for two tribals. Mm, I, I think, think, I think, I think, that's think works. I think the rule is you, don't have your vote until the next tribal, until you next go to tribal. So I think it like, I think he's lost two votes. One cancels the other out. You think he got think his he, vote back? Like one counts, like it's like a minus no, and a minus make a plus. No, it's think, like math. No, I think it's like, okay. <laughs> two negatives make a positive. Yeah. You can't have sugar on Thursday. You can't have sugar on Thursday. You still can't have sugar on Thursday. I don't, that was you're a bad saying, analogy. You say you think it's just one. And it's it just counts one for blanket. Both. Be, yeah. It accounts for both because the beware advantage says, you lose your vote until 
when you right. find the I idol. Right, I think he's going to get the idol. Right. Yeah. Or, you know, until you go to the next travel council. For a council. fact, he's this lost one, his vote from this. Right. This one, you lose your vote until the next tribal council. So. You think both would have reactivated come next tribal? Like, had he gotten through one tribal, he would have gotten it back. As long theory. as he gets through one tribal. He has one tribal with no vote. That's yeah. my for a my fact he vote. has next tribal no vote. Right. I, I don't think, think he'll he get has, the idol. I don't think he has two tribals with no vote. Yeah, I don't right, know. Right. What do you do he, with the mergatory? That's the question for this idol. I don't right. Know. Unless he doesn't get the idol, then yes, of course he wouldn't have I a think vote. I'd drop a note in his bag, you know, that says, Hey, here's how you get your he, idol. Go like, measure the Like how else is he shelter. gonna get the note? Because he has no instructions, say going back to anywhere. I don't know where the merge camp is. I don't know which which camp they're at for the merge. Merge story. Yeah. But. I don't know. All right. Well, that's it for this week. As always, we thank you for listening. Tomorrow, Rebecca and I will be podcasting through uh, ranking everybody left in the game. Uh, obviously, Liz is number one, as we are contractually obligated to do. <laughs> but everyone else will try to figure out where they rank. Uh, but also, next week, we'll be back with Mary on the Winter Analysis Podcast and Rebecca on Wednesday. It's a scheduling thing for those who may not have heard the first couple weeks when I explain this. All right, Mary. Well, I appreciate having you here on the podcast tonight. It was like a classic episode. Yeah, fun to be back. All right. Well, uh, love you, Mary. Okay, bye, everyone. Bye. Bye.